Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here with my lovely wife. Yes, Maureen. And we're excited about personal growth to power as we continue on with part two. And we're looking at the people that you hang out with maybe causing you to become who you are. We're going to talk about this extensively again, so stay with us. Welcome back. You've got a great scripture to yes, start with today. Yes, you know, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it is will spring the issues of life. And so we see Jesus was that way. You know, the Word of God tells us many times that Jesus got up before the sun rose and went out into the garden and prayed, sometimes three, four hours before the disciples were up looking for him. But we see here that what was he doing? He was getting to know what God was calling him to do that day. Because he was, the day. yes, because he was only would say what he heard the Father say, and he only did what he saw the Father do. So he got the plan of the day. So today we're going to talk about that he that he invited Zacchaeus, he invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. The kind of the story yeah. is that as he was walking along on the way into town, there were streets were lined with the poor and rich and lined with people, sick and hurting and all of those things. But the Lord had, God had directed Jesus at this yeah. point. He said when he saw Zacchaeus in the, up tree, in the tree, yes. Zacchaeus, today I'm going to eat at your house. Now it's interesting to know that he had a house. So yeah. there's a lot of people along the way that probably went, why is he going to go hang out they with did. a sinner? They, they got go, upset Oh my about God, it. they upset. He could have came and had, and stay, had lunch yeah. with me in a cardboard box, but he didn't do that that day. He this went. was God's plan to go because the heart of Zacchaeus apparently was something that God had seen was and ready. knew that he sent Jesus to him. Yeah, he was being sent to to Zacchaeus. Yes. Now you have to understand that Zacchaeus was called, was considered the worst of the worst sinners because he was a tax collector Ooh. and uh, and so he and was crooked. stealing from people and yes. crooked. And so they were in shock. Why would you go to his house to eat? But he was going there because God had given him that assignment because Zacchaeus' heart was ready to receive Jesus. Uh, and he had a house and uh, yeah. clean plates, probably. Yeah. So and was... he didn't hang with Zacchaeus. He got there. We know he that God he did brought that. him to the Lord. He said, you know, that, uh, that said, salvation came to things, right? He is the uh, son okay. of Abraham. So yeah. salvation has come to this house yeah. because he understood uh, this whole death, burial, and resurrection that Abraham or, or the Abrahamic covenant. So with God, that in God mind. God comes to, to seek. He said, I came to seek and to save. Now, you know, some people don't, don't understand this statement in verse 10 yeah. of, of Luke chapter 19, where the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Not only those that were lost, uh, those that, I mean, we know that he came to die for all of our sins and give us uh, the opportunity to be born again and, and live eternal with Father God. We understand that. That's why he said, power of salvation has come to the Son of Abraham, but he then goes on and says to say, seek and to save that which was lost. I mean, all of the things that the enemy has stolen over the, all the years of, of history, Jesus knew that he was going to go into hell and he was going to get it all back. Amen. Reclaim it all. I came mm -hmm. to get all of it back. Everything that has been lost from the kingdom, I'm bringing it back to the kingdom. Yes, and it's for us. For he us. Back and it was for the us. Enemy for the born stole again. From us. Yes, and so this is interesting too because we're going to be talking about the 12 disciples. How did Jesus come about teaching or, 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 or picking his 12 disciples out of this, the, the disciples? Well, the Word of God well, tells can just... us. Can I tell you what the Word said in, about it? And then you can... Yes, okay. 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 Is that all right? Yep. Okay. Luke 6 12 says this. And it came to pass in, in those days that he went, Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. So he's always going to the mountain. Always he was a mountain, mountain climber. He yep. went to the mountain to pray and he continued all night praying to God. So what, what, what was he praying? He was about to make the most important decision he needed to make at that time was to find out who God had destined to be his team. And so he prayed all night about it. 
And so, so it says, and when it was day, he called his disciples, and from them he chose the twelve, whom he named also as apostles. Think about that. So he walked along the Sea of Galilee and chose, uh, we know Peter and, and John and those that were there, the yeah. sons of thunder, were the first ones that he picked. They're interesting that they were called the sons of thunder, and I think those are pretty successful and powerful men of some yeah. sort, and uh, fishermen and that owned their own boats and had hired hands and so on. But he chose business people, and remember this, the, the, the principle we're talking about is who you hang out with is who you become. Yes. There's so much to be said about choosing people that celebrate you, and not people that pull you down, but pull, people that pull you up. And that you also pull people up because of who you are, yes. Christ in you. Yes. So we find some interesting things here as he chooses the disciples. These are all business people, all successful people. Not all of them perfect in any sense of the word because he does pick Judas because that's part of God's plan down the road. That was a destiny for him to, That was part of the destiny. And so these people that he surrounded himself with were working, not didn't go to the unemployment line, but he did go and find people that were actively doing. God's looking for people that are working, yeah. working, willing to serve in the kingdom of God and build the kingdom of God. And so this is something that needs to be in our heart oh. because those people that, that was chosen, except Judas, that, that uh, God said it was, he was called to do what he was called to do. Right. But each one of them had a destiny uh, uh, to be in the life of Jesus, and they had a heart for God. And that's what we have to see, that their heart was to expand God's kingdom worldwide. And uh, But so many times it can happen in a church we have seen is that, you know, we eighty we get pulled into the eighty the eighty percent that isn't serving, isn't doing, uh, just coming and 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 trying to take up all your time, and we we forget the twenty that uh, that are to be in our our life or even a business you're doing, the twenty percent that are doing something, and so this is we have to learn. We want to choose, like right now, as we have our ministry word for winners, and we pray about the people. We we want to recognize those that are already serving in word for winners to now uh, 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 look at them to make them a part of the team of of, of now building and, and thinking financially for them and things like that. And so that's where we want our heart to be. Is, is being a part of the ones that are lifting our hands, praying and, and serving and doing in the house. And that, and Jesus said, you know, I, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. serve. We have to yeah. have that kind of we part as, as individual, but then we also want people to surround ourselves with people that are also serving. Yes, and that's what Jesus actually did. Doing. And that's what he did in his selection here with the 12 and uh, out of the 12, we know that three were the, probably the most effective of all the 12. Mm -hmm. And then one that, that uh, one, one doubted, that was Thomas. And then another one uh, was the deceiver, which was part of the whole plan. But just the fact that he got people that were active and doers. So he surrounded himself with people that would help him accomplish his task. Yes, and when he left, they were going to go race. on as the apostles. Um, to build the kingdom. To build a kingdom. And so build he was church. training and developing and mentoring them to, to now when he was gone, they would know how to build uh, because they saw him and how he built. Jesus always, before he went out to build yeah. the ministry, and this is real important in our life, he made sure he had a team. And you know, nobody does it as a lone nobody ranger. Nobody does it by you have alone. God's called a team in your life, and the Bible says, you know, pray that the Lord of Harvest will send forth your labors, send forth the team to help you and lift your hand, and together you build. And so that's so important in our lives. Amen. And so anyway. So uh, the, the disciples, I think that it's fascinating that uh, gets down to uh, Matt, Matthew 16 and, and uh, verses 17, 18, and 19 when Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? Yeah. It is interesting that the ones that went on to do so much in the kingdom, well, one of them was Peter, and Peter said, well, you are 
the Son Christ. of God. You're the Christ. Christ. You're the anointed one that's come. And Jesus said, you know, which is remarkable because Peter, apparently in that, Jesus is saying, you heard from God. Yeah. You, God, you yeah, recognize. Flesh, yeah, flesh and blood didn't tell you that. But flesh my and blood father, didn't, that my is in father heaven, told, heaven you. told you. That. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon the anointed word of the Messiah. Because Jesus is now the head of the church. Right. His name is to dwell in the church. And so he's the head of the church. Right. So he used you know, Peter then and, you know, said, oh, no, no, we're not going to let No, he said, get behind me. Satan, he actually said that to Peter to, because P Peter wanted to protect the anointed one. <laughs> he said, no, you got to allow me. Cross. you got to allow me to go to the cross because this is my destiny. And so everything's okay, Peter. Don't worry about it. You're going to continue on. And, of course, he goes and gets him after this death, burial, yeah. and resurrection and all the things about Peter. But nonetheless, it is great. Amazing that he used Peter to give us that information. He heard from God, which is an example of how we hear from God. But yeah. to understand that on this rock, I will build my church. Yeah. And people are thinking in their hearts, even today, that they are the church. And you are not the church. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit, but the temple is not the church. That mm -hmm. was an example in the Old Testament to give you an understanding of body, soul, and spirit give you the outer courts, the holy place, and the inner courts, which is the holy of holies. That's all that was about. So you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Your body is. But it, the church is filled with all those temples. Yeah. yeah. The church is something that Jesus died for as a training well, ground. it's a gathering. It's a gathering, the training ground of the bride. Jesus, the Bible says in Ephesians that it, he is preparing, he himself is preparing a bride for himself Amen. And in the house or in the church. We've got to get back to the value of the church, the local church and the local church where God has set up a place for the gathering of people, not on your couch, not at home, not know, the says, excuse of COVID, not the excuse of this or that. No, it is about being gathered in the house of the Lord. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. David said it best that when you're in the house, one day is better than a thousand someplace else. That's the truth. But you know what? That it goes on to say that the gates of hell, if you're planted in the house Ooh, of the on, Lord, can't, can't overtake you. And those that are in the church planted, they shall flourish. They, in their old age, they shall still bear fruit and they shall have sap still flowing and they will have green leaves. But it also says that those that are planted in the house of the Lord, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. So now I have the keys because I'm planted and I can bind the forces of darkness because what I bind on earth is bound in heaven. In the invisible, that's right. And what I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So I can bind all the works of the devil, lock him up. He can't touch anything of mine. But I can, I can release all of the kingdom of God to be operating in my life for the day because I'm planted in the house of the Lord. And now, so, how important that you, is. But also that is you know? then the influencers. You become an influence in the church. Yes. Then you have to be selective even in the church of who you spend yeah, time with and who, who you God hang out with. Because Jesus have. said the church is full of sinners. He didn't come to the righteous, but he came to the sinners. So the church is full of sinners, but you still have to be cautious and careful with the choices you make. You love everyone, and you but give, and you, you only hang minister. with those that celebrate you and you celebrate. And you minister to everybody. You know what we're going to go on and talk about in the book here, it talks about uh, when Jesus was born. And so let you it's want personal to talk growth about to power. It. Yeah, but yes, in the book it talks about, okay, that uh, so you want to talk about when Jesus was born. He, you know, the Magi's did not come to Jesus uh, when, he, when he was born. He was two years old before they arrived there. But and we it's know interesting that, that history has done so much with the Magi's yeah. but and you know, the all first, of this. Yeah, the first thing is that uh, Jesus wasn't from poverty uh, because all the, the 
Only the taxpayers, the wealthy, the rich, had to pay taxes. The poor didn't pay taxes. They didn't, they didn't go there. And so yeah, if Joseph right. and Mary had to go to Bethlehem to pay their taxes, meant that they had money to be able to make that journey and go there. So religion wants us to think that he was poor, but he wasn't poor. He bought a house there in Bethlehem and settled there. That's and right. So, you know, and he was away from his business for the years that he was I always there. say it this way. Joseph it's and Mary right. traveled in a Cadillac because uh, they had, had a mule that at least she carried because she was pregnant and she was able to ride the mule. It was a pretty decent journey to get there <clears throat> because they were wealthy and of a well-esteemed family line as well. From the, the, from they the were from David. Ancestors of David. David yeah. Yes. So, so there was the a definite line. following down from Solomon, who was the richest man in history. I'm sure that some of it filtered on them. Yes, it was and obvious. Nonetheless, they went for it. But please understand that two years prior, God had moved on some people in the east Magi. that were astronomers and saw strange things in the sky and knew that something had happened because God planted something in their hearts, that there was a king to be born and that they must follow a star. Ah. And so two years earlier, they launch and travel as a caravan. Now, religion tries to teach you that it was three, three Kings of Orient are is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but there was, it has nothing to do. Three people would never have made a two year journey, first of all, and made it alive because they would have been robbed, killed, whatever. They came as a huge caravan and they brought their treasure to the king. They don't bring a bag of quarters and some Chanel number no. five. They, they traveled all this way two years and get there. And Jesus was born in a manger. Yes, that's true because there was no room in the inn, not because they couldn't afford the room. And Mary says, I can't believe you don't buy or get a reservation. What's the matter with you, Joseph? You know, so she ended up in the, but they're not there long because they, he builds a house. Two years later, when they get there, they're in a house, not in a bar. Yes, and they brought gold. They bought lots of gold. But gold. It says they opened their treasure. treasures. And so they had treasures to give because, because they had a journey to go to Egypt. And well, they because had they the, the wealth. Knew what go was there. going to happen with Herod, who was going to kill all of those that were two years old. And you know what? So Herod had, got mad. Oh, my god. Was gosh. because they weren't giving all of those treasures to, to the king, Herod, but they were taking it to the king, Jesus. And that's what upset him so much, was the, the, the wealth that they were giving the king, Jesus, and, uh, and Herod was full of greed. And so he, he went ahead to kill the babies, but Joseph had a dream. And also the Magi's had a, had a dream and they told him not to go back the way of Herod because Herod said, come back and tell me where he is. So they went a different route and God, and God gave a dream to Joseph, get up right away and get out of here, go to Egypt. And he was to stay in Egypt, how long? Until I Herod was dead. Until Herod was dead, I think. So, I'm, that's only a guess, but so eight to 10 years. You so. have to think about the wealth they might have had. How many of us can go to the Riviera and live for for on the Nile years. River, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and live there and without you know the job, and, yeah. And you have to have food, you have to have law, you have to have a place to stay, and everything. Raise the child, yes. Yeah, so God provided the wealth that God Jesus will always needed. provide the wealth according they to the level of the dream that God's given you. Yeah, it will always provide for and God took care of his over, son Excuse over me, and I'm over sorry. again. But again, it comes down to uh, uh how how your life outcome of your life is so influenced by the people that surround you yeah. the people that you choose to be mentored by the people that you choose to follow the people that you choose to hear the people that you choose to listen yeah. to the people that you invest in you are uh, accountable and responsible for your outcome so choosing carefully is very important yes and here we're talking about the wealth here again is that you know when the the wealth the man that was very wealthy came and said you know how can I get to heaven and you know what oh negative news no not him but anyway um, what Jesus said he said you had to give everything oh, away oh that one yes yes yes, yes yeah. the rich man 
And so he just left. He wasn't going to do it. So his money was his God. And so then the disciples got all nervous because Jesus said this. And he said to the disciples, Surely I say to you that it's harder, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When this, his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, at saying, <laughs> well, who can be saved? They, that just proves that they had we're, money. We're They're wealthy. going, oh my oh God, my we're up. What's going to happen to us? We're wealthy people. We didn't give up our wealth. We still have our businesses going. And Jesus looked at them and said to them, with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. And so we see that. And so you. So the care and the concern in the gospel has to be for the rich and for the poor. Yes. It has to be for everyone. It, it has to be the same for everyone as best as is possible. But it, too many people get so upset with people that have money and uh, get, get upset with them even being in, in the church and they, they judge people. No, it, it, God loves all people, wishes that all should be saved and none should be lost. And so that has to enter the hearts of all of us. Yeah, and what does it mean, go through the, the Campbell, go through oh, the Oh, yeah, I have a needle. needle. That, well, actually, there's two different explanations. One is that it's a Aramaic idiom saying that too many people will trust in their money and not in God. That's, okay. that's an idiom. That's one of the theologians speak. And I believe as idioms, I, there's so many in the Bible uh, that need to be explained to people. Uh, but... Also, it was a game that they played. Yeah. It was actually a, a, an afternoon game on day off of, of, of the early form of the Sabbath. There was something where uh, they would take a camel between two rock formations. There is a place called the Eye of the Needle. And, uh, and camels have their eyes on the sides of their head. Yeah. And so to try to get a camel through something very narrow where mm -hmm. his eyes are closed on both sides, I mean, the camel does not like it much. Doesn't so like it. <laughs> it's very difficult to accomplish it was like a the task. It was, a, it was like a game that they played, and uh, yeah, people got hurt at the game. But anyway, uh, so there's two different explanations. So there's another scripture that says, you know, the Son of God has no place to lay his head. The birds have nests and foxes have holes. Yeah. That, again, is an Aramaic idiom because we know that Jesus had a lake home. Yeah. That's the one that they lowered the man down yeah. with the, and got healed. So we know you got to read the whole Bible before you start making judgments about wealth and judgments about but Jesus and, you think and, it was, and understanding truth. You think it was because he was traveling so no. much? He, he said, you, 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 much, actually, so. the idiom means that you okay. will not be able to go where I go. In other words, he was going to the cross, and that's not a place that you'll be able to go. Yeah. That's what the idiom meant. Okay. So, so Aramaic idioms are throughout the Bible. There are so many of them. Uh, if your right hand offends you, or your right eye offends you, pluck it out. That that's foolishness, of course. It simply means don't don't enter into greed and lust, uh, or cut your right hand off if it, it offends you. That simply means steal. don't steal. Uh, these these are uh, uh, idioms that men, many people don't really grasp and understand, like they they really should. Yeah, until um, they think it means actually some real some. Religions out there actually cut off a hand. Well, yeah, the, in the Islam, that's uh, yeah, and you know, if you take it literal, and it wasn't meant to be literal even in the Quran, but uh, some of the Ayatollahs yeah. take it literal, and so people get confused yeah, and about I know truth. My grandfather in Italy, uh, he was caught stealing at eight, and they put him in prison. He didn't get out of prison until he was 19 years old. Yeah, child. Because um, of... You know, the idioms, they didn't cut off his hand, praise God, but they did put him in prison. Yeah. So interesting things. Uh, so I want to encourage you, if there's someone out there that does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. This whole book is about principles that can lead you to success. I've tried to live my life in your life by, we've been working at this diligently, that these 18 power principles can revolutionize your ch your life, and if you lived out just six or eight or ten of them, success would never elude you. These things will yeah. cr create success yeah. in your life because they're following the principles of yeah. Jesus. Yeah, and you have to be sure that your heart is right. Jesus' heart was right, and you, so your heart is right. 
You're not befriending people. You're not manipulating. What, you're not controlling. No, and no. You're not for what they can give you, but you are. What you, you can are, give them. You're about give what you can give to them, what God has given you. The, the, you know, today we have the Holy Spirit in our life. And, and, of course, Jesus had the Holy Spirit leading Obviously. and guiding him in all truth. And now God did not leave us as an orphan, but he put the Holy Spirit in our life. And then we receive the baptism, which means we're covered in the Holy Spirit. And we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in, in our lives and the fruit of the Spirit. But now the Spirit of God is here to lead us and guide us right. into all truth. And, uh, and so we are... Everything should be because God is leading us uh, to the friends he wants in our life with the knowing that we know and uh, being mentored by the Spirit of God and that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So I receive his intercession and he is my guide. He's my comforter. Uh, he's my counselor and he's my, my strengthener. And so the Holy Spirit is to be that in our life. So as Jesus was led by the Spirit of God in these ways, so are we led that way. And and we're gonna we're not even gonna be able to finish the other pages that deal with this oh, particular me. topic. Uh, we're gonna go to principle three in the next show, but you can get the book and find out the rest of the information that's in it. But for those of you that have never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him. God wishes that none should perish, but all should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Pray this prayer and repeat it after me. And just meaning it in your heart, your life will revolutionize and change in an instant. You'll be absolutely, your desires in life will immediately change. It is not about becoming religious in any fashion or way, but it is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who desires to help guide you to success and to the right kind of life. Yeah. So just repeat after me. Dear Father God, Father I ask God. you to forgive me of all my yeah. sin. I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Amen. Lord and Amen. my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that, then tell somebody. Yeah, and amen. we have a, uh, if you need prayer at all, you no, just no call that line, that number that's on there, and there are Somebody people there with wanting to pray with you and help you through things and explain what just happened to you right now that you received Jesus. So go to the phones and call that number. And also, we we, we really need you to now... Uh, become a team member. Yeah, we become want a you team to member. become a team If you've so, been blessed, be a blessing to the yes. show. And uh, go to our YouTube, Tom and Maureen Anderson. And like, subscribe, and share, and you'll get to hear these teachings. There's a lot of teachings online. God Thank bless you, you so much for being with us. See you next time. Are you ready to go to the next level in your life? By studying the life of Jesus, we can see there are success principles that he lived and illustrated for us. In this book, Personal Growth to Power, Jesus Between the Lines, Dr. Tom Anderson shares 18 power principles that will produce success in your life. Through application of this teaching, you will become successful at whatever you put your hand to. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.